Hey everyone, we'll be working on a couple of different questions today uh, and just answering those. So first one was a roof. Or how do we actually manage to create different types of roofs? I went through this with some of you in the um, session, but basically let me just create a couple of walls uh, to make it a little bit easier to understand. So let's create a beautiful building. And let's create a bit of a weird shape to make it a little bit more difficult for us. There we go. Okay, so if we go into 3D mode, we have a um, we have our building here. And let's say that we are creating our roof for this. We can click on the little arrow down below to have all of these different options. Um, these are all a little bit of ad advanced elements, so you can always just refer to the first one, which is the icon that you can click on here as well. It will ask you what the level is, so we always need to select the upper level uh, where your roof is going to be. So for example, if I just click on now and cancel this, we can see that our level one is four meters. So I can actually select this and say, okay, I want my house to be five meters. And this is, I'm going to rename this one to be roof level. So you always need to create um, the roof level. It will be much easier to control. So rather than having the level one, um, Sorry, you, you can have level one as well, but for this case, you always should have a specific roof level um, because it will make it easier to adjust afterwards. So then all of your walls should change your unconnected height uh, to be the, the top constraint to be um, the upper level, which is the roof. And that way, when we are changing our roof to be whatever we want, these walls will always follow. Okay, so with this in mind, we will click on the roof and then we will select our upper level, which is called roof in this case. We go yes, and now we can select our walls. So we click on pick a wall, select one of these walls and just click tab to get a chain link of all of them. Then we left click and create our roof in there. Now when we are doing this, you can see that you are creating the roof on the external facade face. If for some reason, um, when you select your wall, it selects an internal level, you can have this little flip option that will allow you to flip between the interior interior of the, of the wall and the exterior. So just click on this a few times until you are ready and happy. And then we can just go finish. And at this stage, before we go finish, if you look at here, you can see that every single one of these lines has a defined slope selected, which means that will become an angle uh, so if you have, if we align this like in such a way, so we can actually see that all of these have their own angle, which means every single surface will create an angle. And if you go OK, we will get shaped like this. So all of this is automatically calculated by Revit as long as you, as you, as long as you tell it which one of these faces or lines is going to be an angled part of the roof. So if I double click on this to go edit mode. I can select this face and I can say undefined slope. So just uncheck it. And that means it will not be a sloped element, which means it will be something like this. And then if you want this wall to go all the way up, you select the wall, you go attach top or base. We make sure that the top selection is on, not the base. And we just click on that. And now the wall fills that up rather nicely. Um, if you double click on here, you can select a few others and you can deselect them and see what the hell it actually gives you. So in this case, it gives you something like this. It's not really something nice that we want to keep, but it will actually allow you. Let's just click here, click here. It will allow you to create many different types and see what works best. Now, if you want to have an overhang, the easiest way is if you select any one of these, you can just go, go here in the overhang option and just type in whatever you want, 600 or 1200, whatever feels good. And what you will have is this overhang will continue on in that face. Now we usually should select all of them at once and have all of them have the same overhang, but it really depends on your house type. And there you go, you have a simple little overhang there, but you will notice that the overhang goes below the roof level. So if I just go to one of these side faces, you can see where our roof level is and the overhang continues downwards. So just be aware of that as well. So if, for example, uh, your overhang is at the roof level, 
um, make sure you select your roof you go to move select that point there and just move it up until it hits uh, the actual roof level there and because all of these walls are uh, selected to hit the roof it, they will follow it and all the other ones like these which haven't been selected to follow the roof they will just stop short so always make sure that the external ones if required uh, based on your house will automatically select uh, be selected and um, follow the roof just makes it much easier to do if you're unsure which ones you need to make your roof shape select all of them and just unselect all of them go finish and this is just now a flat roof so without any slope you actually get a flat roof but the thing is flat roof doesn't actually exist um, even if you refer to these um, uh, designs which have flat roof the flat roof is usually at, at least uh, two or three degrees so that means that at least one of these is selected and that slope there is selected to something like three degrees so you would always have something like this at least uh, one or two, one degree being bare minimum uh, but standards in Australia dictate two to three degrees uh, just to allow the water to collect on one side and this is usually where you would have your gutter um, and that's how it works so usually when you have these ladder ones uh, the gable roofs are usually 25 to 35 degrees just depending on how you want to um, uh, uh, construct it but it really dictates that most of these are selected so usually if you select the two opposite sides like this and this and you make them all um, I don't know let's say 25 oops uh, so you can change these angles in here or when you go finish you can actually then select your roof and it will be able to be changed from this angle as well in this parameter under properties and so basically when you have a two separate roofs you can have all of this data and see all of this um, all, all of this additional lines even though we haven't specified uh, what the angle is it automatically follows from this side and this side uh, to come up with all of these other areas so you don't have to have everything you can just select the simplest options and the rest will be calculated automatically by Revit so if you want to play some weird elements you can select some of these um, like so and that will start breaking up uh, your roof structure because it's not clearly meant to do that <laughs> but yeah up to you how you want to model up your beautiful house but yeah that's the basics of uh, roof really um, the next element of course is if you want to go for the inverse and you make a butterfly you can select these and you make it you can make them negative territory so you can sort of say minus 15 um, and then you can sort of start getting uh, more refined shapes see this one here broke the uh, broke the roof and that's because both of these are negative uh, are different values so one of us positive one was negative and that doesn't really work so if we make both of them negative value then, then we can clearly see now we have a little little beautiful butterfly and if we change this one to be attached you can now see look at it gorgeous all right so that's the basics of course uh, when you are doing this um, just going to put in 15 positive uh, you want to put in sometimes the gutters and the gutters work by clicking on the roof and click on clicking on the fascia so fascia is that timber profile that you get to the sides like so so you can again use the uh, use the tab to to do mass selection and select where your fascia is going to be so usually the fascia is larger than the roof thickness so in this case we will just change this to be a generic 125 so you can see that now the roof is actually only half the, the width that the fascia does so sometimes that's required in your areas and then after that we can go back to here go back to roof and click on the um, uh, roof gutter now be careful when you're selecting your gutter uh, from here if you have fascia it's easy to select uh, the interior of the fascia by mistake so always make sure you select the external face so that will place your gutter uh, on, on the external areas and there you go clearly you can't and you, you can't put a, a gutter on an angle like this nor would you actually require it so if you actually point to it it's not going to allow you because you don't actually need it so that's kind of nice uh, the other thing is the gutters will never have the cap ends 
uh, that's the only crappy thing about Revit. It doesn't actually give us that option. So you, you, even if you want to do it manually, you will have to do a lot. You know, you, you would have to go component model in place, try to select that face there. It, it's, it's just not worth it. Just don't do it. You can, you can do this in 3D Max much easier afterwards. Afterwards, just place a little uh, plate there. Um, so yeah, that's your roofs. Um, and if you are looking for other elements, uh, we can um, refer to the other U YouTube clips. Thank you guys. Bye.